Hi everybody, welcome back to Everyday They're Delivering. It's Cass and it's that time of the month. It's the beginning of the month. It's a new month. And that means it's time to see what Amazon has in store for us this month with their first reads program. So all the books I'm about to show you are going to be coming out on August 1st. They are early releases, if you will. Uh, so we have 10 to choose from this month. And I believe based on the little, little learn more button, it says we might have two picks this month. So let's get right into it. So... The first book is called What Never Happened by Rachel Housel Hall. This is 423 pages. This is your thriller, suspense type book. And she seems to be a New York Times bestselling author. Colette Coco Weber has relocated to her Catalina Island home where 20 years before she was the sole survivor of a deadly home invasion. All Coco wants is to see her Aunt Gwen get as far away from her ex as possible and get back to her craft writing obituaries. Thankfully, her college best friend, Maddie, owns the local paper and has a job sure to keep Coco busy, considering the number of elderly folks who are dying on the island. But as Coco learns more about these deaths, she quickly realizes that the circumstances surrounding them all are remarkably similar and not natural. Then Coco receives a sinister threat in the mail, her own obituary. As Coco begins to draw connections between connections between a serial killer's crimes and her own family tragedy, she fears that the secrets on the Catalina Island might be too deep to survive because whoever's watching her is hell-bent on finally putting her to rest. Ooh, this book sounds so good. This is probably going to be one of my picks for this month. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm already liking this one. Next book, There's No Coming Back From This by Anne Garver. So this looks to be a witty and emotional novel by a be your USA Today bestselling author of I Thought You Said This Would Work. This is 300 pages, literature fiction, and let's get right to the description. It seems lately that Poppy Lively is invisible to everyone but the IRS. After her accountant husband, after her accountant absconded with her life savings, newly bankrupt Poppy is on the verge of losing her home when Old Flame, now a hotshot producer, gives her a surprising way out. A job in costumes on a Hollywood film set. It's a bold move to pack her bags, keeping secrets from her daughter, and head to Los Angeles. But Poppy's a capable person. How hard can a job in wardrobe be? It's not like she has a choice. Her life couldn't get any worse. Even so, this Midwesterner has a lot to learn about the fast and loose world of movie stars, iconic costumes, and backlot intrigue. As a single mom, she's rarely had time for watching movies. She doesn't sew, and she doesn't know a single thing about dressing the biggest names in the business. Floundering and overlooked, Poppy has one ally, Alan Carroll. An ill-tempered movie star taken with Poppy's unfiltered candor and general indifference to stardom. When Poppy stub stumbles upon corruption, she relies on everyone underestimating her to discover who who's at the center of it. A revelation that will shake her belief in humanity. What she thought was a way to secure a future for her daughter becomes a spotlight illuminating the facts. Poppy is out of her league among the divas of Tinseltown. Poppy must decide whether to keep her mouth shut, as she's always done, or with the help of a scruffy dog, show the movie makers that they need her unglamorous ways, whether the superstars like it or not. That does sound interesting, but I don't know if I'll be picking it this month, but this might be a book that I'll, I might have a, you know, save for later type. Next, Sing Wild Bird, Sing by Jacqueline Omah Omahoney. Omahoney, yes. This is 279 pages. This is just your genre fiction type book. A courageous woman journals from the journeys from the 19th century Ireland to the American West in a powerful novel. Okay, it's 1849 on the west coast of Ireland. Resilient oh, Honora, Honora O'Donoghue is accustomed to fending for herself and reading the language of the natural world. It is. Oh, it was always said she'd been marked for something different, but it's not until she suffers devastating losses in a country gripped by the famine that Honora begins to understand how... That difference will save her. With the hope of a better life in America calling, Honora keeps moving forward towards her freedom. Across the Atlantic, she's unfamiliar with the customs. Jobs are scarce, and she has no money. She, fo oh, she finds only one friend, and Honora's desperation in a is a state to be taken advantage of. Even the prospect of marriage is not without its conditions, and far from the dream she imagines. With so much disappointment and heartache, heartbreak in her past, Honora must decide what, she, what kind of life she wants and what is she, what she's prepared to get to it. Man, that was tongue twister for me. Um, sounds, inter sounds interesting, but not going to be for me. The Hanging City by Charlie M. Charlie N. Holmberg. This is 344 pages. This is, this is another genre fiction. 
Okay, so seven years on the run from her abusive father and with no hope of sanctuary among the dwindling pockets of human civilization, Lark is out of options. Her only leverage is a cursed power. She can thrust fear onto others, leaving all threats fleeing in terror. It's a means of survival as she searches for a place called to call home. If the campfire myths of her childhood are true, Lark's sole chance for refuge could lie in Kagmar, the city of trolls, a brutal species and the sworn enemies of humanity. Value and combat prowess, the, tro the troll high council is intrigued. Lark could be much more useful than the low caste humans who merely labor in Kagmar. Her gift makes her invaluable as a monster slayer to fight off the unspeakable creatures that torment the Trolls' Hanging City, suspended from a bridge over an endless dark canyon. Lark will do anything to make Hagmar her home, but her new role comes with a caveat. Use her power against a troll and she'll be killed. Her loyalty is quickly put to the test when she draws the hatred of a powerful troll who loathes humankind. Still, she finds unexpected friendship in the city and even more surprisingly, love. But if everything else doesn't undo her, being caught in the arms of a troll surely will. Now in the fight of her life, Lark has to do, has to learn has a lot to learn about her past, about trust and hope when all seems lost, and above all, about the extraordinary power of fear itself. Sounds interesting. Let's go on to the next book. The Way Life Should Be by William Dameron. This is 308 pages. There's another literature fiction book. It is a warm, funny unforgettable novel. Husbands Thomas and Matt are enjoying a second chance marriage after coming out, leaving their wives and finding happiness in a summer cottage off the co on the southern coast of Maine. They've kept a tenuous peace with their exes. Thomas toils in the garden. There is an ease to their love. This is the way life should be. But it's not long before their three children, each nearing adulthood and fleeing personal crises of their own, descend on their father's bliss. The two-bedroom getaway has just enough space for Thomas and Matt's future. Now they must make room for the past and all its drama. During an unintentional family reunion, old lives broken and in need of repair converge with the new. Over the course of an unforgettable summer, two fathers and their children will come together. They, they'll understand what life still can be. Pain, anger, flaws, and all they're determined to forge a loving way forward. It's an interesting description. It doesn't read like an actual description for a novel. It just, I don't know, it's not it's weird. Anyway, the next book is called To Die For by Lisa Gray. This is 329 pages. This is another thriller suspense book. She is a best-selling author. I've never, never heard of her, actually. Sounds from, She sounds familiar, but I might be thinking of another uh, author. In the elite world of luxury real estate, it is often kill or be killed. Something agent Andy Hart knows all too well. And after recent events, she's ready to set her own rules. So when her boss challenges the team to find a buyer for a glitzy Malibu beach house with the cool prize commission of a cool $1 million, she knows it's her ticket to a new life. But she know, but she's not the only one who wants but needs the money. Each of her four colleagues has secrets they're eager to hide. Secrets $1 million will go a long way in concealing, and soon it becomes clear that all five will do just about anything to get their hands on it. When a dead body is found at the at the open house, the dream house, dream home becomes a nightmarish crime scene. Has the contest reached a deadly new level, or is something more sinister at work? This is a possibility for a second book. This is po a definite possibility for me. Next is called... In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yaros. This is 348 pages. This is another literature fiction type book. So, when Izzy Astor gets on a plane to go home, she isn't expecting much. It's the usual holiday travel experience. Uh, busy, crowded, stressful. Then she spots her seatmate, who was anything but ordinary. Nate Filon sports dark hair, blue eyes, and a deliciously rugged charm that Izzy can't resist. Their connection is undeniable. Izzy never believed in destiny before, but now she does. Just 90 seconds after takeoff, their plane goes down in the Missouri River. Their lives change. They change. Nate goes on to a career in the military while Izzy finds herself, finds her way into politics. Despite a few chances over the, chance encounters over the years, the timing never feels right. Then comes a high stakes reunion, reunion in Afghanistan where Nate is tasked with protecting Izzy's life. He'll do anything to keep her safe and everything to win her heart. Oh, so this is another romance book. Okay, let me move on to the next one. It Will All Work Out, The Freedom of Letting Go by Kevin Hart. This is a short story. This is 44 pages long. And I've never been a real big fan of Kevin Hart. I've seen a lot of his comedy specials, and I 
tend to take them off after like halfway through. I just I just can't get into his comedy specials. Uh, join Kevin Hart as he identifies and battles one of the biggest obstacles to happiness. What he control what he calls the control master. This fearsome beast loves telling others what to do, so you feel safe and they feel miserable. Other times, the the need to stay in control means hiding, avoiding everyone, and everything that makes you uncomfortable. This means avoiding love and success, too. Kevin looks at how control issues have shown up in his own life and how they might show up in yours. This masterclass homes in on why micromanaging your life and other people lead, can lead to toxic relationships, stress, failure. I'm just going to continue stopping here. I don't think I'm interested in reading anything from a guy who, uh, from Kevin Hart. I gotta tell you on how to manage your own life. Uh, no, no, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move on forward. Just move on. Just move on quickly. Broadway Butterfly, a thriller by Sarah DeVello. Uh, this is 425 pages. This is another thriller suspense book. We are in the Roaring Twenties, a riveting true crime novel. Ooh, based on one of the most notorious unsolved murders of the era. I wonder which murder this is. This might be very interesting because there's an unsolved murder. There might be a book about it, and I might be very interested in that. Manhattan, 1923. Scandalous flapper Doc King is found dead in her midtown apartment. A bottle of chloroform besides her and a fortune in jewels missing. Dot's headline-making murder grips the city. It also draws a clutch of lovers, parasites, and justice seekers into one of the city's most mesmerizing mysteries. Among them, Daily News crime reporter Julia Hartman chasing the story while navigating a male-dominated industry. Righteous NYPD detective John D. Coughlin struggling against city corruption. And Ella Bradford, the victim's Harlem maid, closest confidant and keeper of secrets. Adding fuel to the already volatile crime, a politically motivated motivated, a politically connected Philadelphia socialite, an Atlantic City bootlegger, Dot's dicey gigolo lover, a sultry Broadway dancer, and a cagey sugar daddy guarding secrets of his own. From Broadway's glittering lights to its sordid underbelly to the machinations of the country's most powerful men, Julia embarks on a quest for justice. What she discovers, twist after breathtaking twist, might be even more nefarious than murder. Oh, this is my second pick. I gotta tell you, this is my second pick. Love it, love it, love it. The last book is a children's book uh, with the eight, reading age of 8 to 12, and it's 300 and, 8 to 12 years old, and it's 312 pages. So you have children, and you're interested, and they might be interested in reading something like this. So, uh, Batu and the Search for the Golden Cup by Zira Nari, Narizbai. Uh, looks like there are several authors, also... Uh, Lila Kaulis, and Shelley Fairweather Vega, who is the translator. Batu is just an ordinary kid in present-day Almaty, worried about bullies, school, and his mom's new baby until he meets, until the day he meets Aspara, the Golden Warrior. Aspara, te- Aspara steps straight out of Batu's notebook cover and out of Kazakhstan's past. Aspara has been waiting hundreds of years to be summoned to the human world and finally get his chance to search for the golden cup, a magic talisman sent down from the heavens. Heavens. When the golden cup was lost, Aspara watched as many of his friends and family were killed or disappeared. Craving adventure and a sense of perfect purpose, Batu sets out with Aspara and his own friends to find the golden cup, plunging them into an adventure through a world where myths come alive. But there are others looking for the cup, and they'll do anything to make sure the kids fail. Will Batu and his friends make it out alive and make it home in, in time for dinner? Now, if I was 8 to 12 years old and I read this book, this is something I would actually read if I was between the ages of 8 and 12. Gotta tell you, this is something I definitely would have. So, overall, 10 choices. They're all pretty good, except for the Kevin Hart one. I, I don't know about that one. So, the first book is pro- is definitely going to be my first pick, Whatever Happened. The second book is a book that I will not be picking, but I will be trying to remember it. Uh, Sing Well, Bird Sing, um, the description was just, meh, I just, I'm not going to be picking it. The Hanging City... It was. It sounded. It sounded okay. The way life should be. This was an interesting. Interesting description. Didn't read like a novel though. Uh, the next one to die for. This is gonna be a book that I will be uh, saving for later, remembering because I really want to read. Um, no, no. There you go. Broadway Butterfly would be my second pick. So, the the likely event. This is definitely your romance book. So if you're interested in romance, this is definitely gonna be one of your picks for you. Um, if you're real big on humor entertainment or you're a big fan of Kevin Hart, um, and you really want to read a short story, then I guess check this out. But I'm just, I don't know, I'm not interested in in, in reading about 
how to micromanage my life or how not to by someone like like Kevin Hart. Um, this is definitely going to be my second pick for the month, and this is definitely a pick if you have children and they're really getting into reading. This definitely sounds like a book that, if I was between the ages of 8 and 12, I would have definitely read this. This sounds like a, a Percy Jackson, Harry Potter, all that stuff rolled into one. So, that is going to be it for us today. Uh, let me know down below what you would pick. If you are an Amazon Prime member, did you pick anything? Um, and, uh, yeah, so stay tuned. I'm hoping to get through these two books this month so stay tuned for any you know spoiler free reviews and um that's gonna be it for us today thank you so so much for watching and uh we will see you guys in the next video bye everybody <music>